David Lee Roth has always been someone who's been volatile and unpredictable at times, but this week really takes things to a different level. He's been ruthlessly attacking both Sammy Hagar and now Wolfgang Van Halen, both his former bandmate in Van Halen and also the son of Eddie Van Halen and the nephew of Alex Van Halen. So when you consider it through that lens, he's kind of like an uncle figure to Wolfgang, has so much history uh, with both the late great legend Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen. Just on that standard alone, it's a little crazy for him to be saying some of the horrible things he's saying about Wolfgang in this sort of stream of consciousness rant that he uploaded to YouTube. Now, the backdrop of all of this is that there have been tension seemingly surrounding a highly demanded, highly requested tribute show for that icon, Eddie Van Halen. And though that is something that really hasn't been discussed in quite some time, because I think we all got the message, hey, this isn't happening. But then fast forward to November of last year, where you had Sammy Hagar announcing that massive tour that he's doing. He said he was gonna invite everybody out, anybody who wanted to perform. David Lee Roth says, well, I would love to perform because Sammy Hagar shouted him out by name and invited him. Sammy Hagar basically goes, well, you can't come on the whole tour. You know, that's not what I'm saying. You can come out for one night, just like everybody else where we're gonna have guests. This is what he said about Sammy Hagar initially. I thought this was just a one-off kind of diss. They've taken digs at each other, but I'm genuinely surprised at what he's saying about Wolfgang. So he says in a video he recently uploaded to YouTube, he goes, according to Sammy, was abducted by aliens. I know when you're abducted by aliens, you get sex probed. I'm compelled to solicit this sordid subject in an effort to explain Sam Hagar's conduct. For the last 10 summers, I haven't said a single syllable about him, not one, I defy you. And in the face of constant fart gas aimed in our direction, here at the Mojo Dojo, Diamond Dave Laboratories, and I think we've arrived at both the technical and medical answer that may explain some of Sammy's conduct and his constant spew of diarrhea vitriol in our direction. Sammy Hagar was abducted by aliens and he was sex probed, sex probed. He goes, does this require apparatus? Is it a beam? We don't know, we may never know, but what I do know is absolute accuracy is that if you take a half popsicle and you jam it into a cassette tape player, no matter how carefully you extract it, that tape player will never play the same again, no matter how carefully you try to fix the delicate little parts. And it'll get worse, and it'll seem like the singer that you used to be will stop making sense whatsoever, a lot like Sam. It seems like he's alluding to some of the conversation and discourse surrounding that tour and what was said about him maybe doing a guest feature spot. That's all I can guess, but now I'm really thrown off because Wolfgang Van Halen has nothing to do with that. I don't think he ever commented on that tour and this is a guy who just kind of stays in his own lane. He makes great music. He's very talented as a songwriter. And the, the main thing he seems to deal with is a lot of people wanting him just to play Van Halen songs on stage. And I totally get that. He wants to forge his own path. He's a very talented musician and plays multiple instruments. Why would you learn how to do all of that if you're just gonna re repetitively play the, song, the music that your father made? And uh, that doesn't mean that he doesn't love it. He's pointed this out. He has written songs as a tribute to his father that he does play every night up on stage. So, uh, you know, he gets a lot of kind of weird questions from fans about, you know, you should add Panama into the set. And, uh, you know, I think he should be able to do whatever he wants to do. But you've got some really ugly comments here that are being made by David Lee Roth that I just question why he's doing it. Doesn't make a lot of sense. What is going on? Maybe there's something going on behind the scenes that we're unaware of. So in this video, there's a skit that it opens with, which is a conversation between David Lee Roth and Jesus Christ that metaphorically suggests that Wolfgang benefited from nepotism when he was tapped to play bass in Van Halen as a teenager back in 2007. It says the immature Jesus voice says, bro, I just want people to know I got this job because of my talent. I would have had this job anyway, even if my dad wasn't God. He then goes into a story where he says that Wolfgang was complaining about him. So then he goes on this rant and he goes, this fucking kid, he's complaining the entire tour like I'm not paying enough attention to him on stage. Like Santa Claus coming down the chimney and popping out on Christmas with nobody paying attention. Shalom to the dome, homie. I'm giving him the best. Everything I've got in front of 20, 30,000 people at a clip. And he's complaining to everybody around me, the business manager, the security guy, the clothing lady. Dave's not paying enough attention to me. Cut to New York City, glamorous, glistening, shimmering, uh, shimmering New York City, and we're at Jones Beach and 20,000 of my closest friends. I walk out into the middle of the stage and I'm gonna do Ice Cream Man, and I'm testifying to the brothers, Eddie and Al. 
man, this is how many times we've played New York. This is spectacular. And what I don't know is this kid, this kid has commandeered a couple of monkey monkeys to go in back behind my back over the side of the stage and throw out these two great dames that I invited to be my guests at the show. And these dames are in their forties. Okay. Business women. In fact, you aren't going to believe this shit. This fucking kid. What does he know? It, what he doesn't know is that these two dames work for the accounting firm that represent him, not me. But as usual, he, just like his uncle and his uncle's brother, stiffed them for tickets. I know they're going to do that, so I got ahead of things and I give them tickets. I put them way off to the side. And I'm not talking about Motley Crue groupies here. This is the real deal. And they're both carrying big satchel perches, right? Like Gucci. Here we go. And he throws them out of the building. He's teaching me a lesson. What this fucking kid doesn't know is they're carrying the paychecks for all 82 people on the road crew. Nobody tells me till I'm parked in the middle of the fucking bridge. You know, fucking Jones Beach, they think I'm going to freak out. I laughed so hard, I spilled my Snapple. Cut to Hollywood. That's Gooey Balooey Hollywood. We're playing the Hollywood Bowl in October 2015. It's the last two shows of the tour, and Ed's not having a good day this year. So I know, hey, maybe I always got to play it like what if this is our last show I ever have with the brothers. This is important to me. We're celebrating 50th anniversary here when we first started arguing over which song is first. Stay focused. The brothers are playing. I walk out on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. This is the very last show that we're playing, and I start getting tears in my eyes because I testify to Ed and I testify to Al that, hey, we started right down the street at little nightclub called Gazari's. We're playing dance tunes, and our parents didn't give us shit. We made every penny go right into the gas tank or on the guitar strings, fretboard. Okay, here we go. We're at the Hollywood Bowl. I'm about to launch into Ice Cream Man and this fucking kid. He commandeers two muscle monkeys located the one dame that is my guest. She's off in the wings of the Hollywood Bowl. They find her, make her do the walk of shame past all the other guests out into the parking lot and throw her out of the building. Wolfie Van Halen's going to teach me a lesson by throwing out what he thinks is my girlfriend. But guess what? Not only is this an accountant again, and not only is she carrying the paychecks of all 82 of us on the road crew, but she's carrying cash bonuses for everybody there. You may want to pull over on this next one. You're going to pee your pants. Remember New York City? It's the same fucking lady. I'm just honestly pretty perplexed by this because he's really going scorched earth on both Wolfgang Van Halen and Sammy Hagar. And I'm not sure why, because this is just really out of left field. There hasn't really been much said about him, uh, at least in months. So I, I don't know if he watched a video or something, read an article about something that he hadn't seen, and he got mad and decided to go on YouTube and talk shit. Uh, but he's been posting stuff. Uh, he has a podcast on his YouTube channel where he's just kind of stream of consciousness about this. And he seems very angry about it. And I'm not sure why. Very strange stuff here from David Lee Roth. And I don't think we're ever going to see them now working together in any capacity, unfortunately. I mean, I, I know we already knew that, but now this just kind of really seems to seal the deal. I don't know what motivates him in that. Who knows, man? David Lee Roth is a strange bird and he is a different kind of dude. And even the way he words things and explains them there. So eccentric, so aloof. And, uh, you know, you hear Sammy Hagar saying that he's very different off stage and that he presents a certain persona. So, you know, it's just hard to tell what's right or wrong, but uh, I don't know. And, and I don't know if David's going to continue doing this. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to see, folks. But I know a lot of you have strong opinions about this whole saga from the last video. So let me know, as always, what you think in the comments down below. That's your latest video update here from Rockfeed. If you're new here, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the family. We got a lot more news coming and some big podcast guests coming very soon. Thanks for watching.